Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I'm back with a Firewall Ultra video. We are less than three months away from PlayStation Virtual Reality 2. Now as we get closer to launch, our excitement grows for the games we'll soon be playing. Perhaps none more so than Firewall Ultra, at least for me. So I wanted to make a video talking about some changes that we might experience going from Firewall Zero Hour to Firewall Ultra. Remember, it's not just a sequel, it's new hardware, it's new capabilities, and these things could really blow the doors of what we're used to in a Firewall experience. Now we still know relatively little about Firewall Ultra and this will all be speculation because of that, but some of this is based on logical thinking, at least I think so, so might not be too far-fetched. Before I dive in, if you're interested in Firewall Ultra or PSVR 2, then consider subscribing because this channel will be focusing on that kind of content. With that out of the way, I want to start with something seemingly small, but that could really shake things up. Now I'm talking about flashlights. OG Firewall players may remember that when Firewall Zero Hour was first revealed, they showed off the compound map at night and the players were equipped with flashlights but eight players with flashlights running around must have been just a bit too taxing for the poor old PS4, so the feature got axed and Compound's lighting was reworked, leaving us to wonder what might have been. But we may not have to wonder much longer, as the Firewall Ultra Reveal trailer clearly showed us functioning flashlight attachments in the game. You might be thinking to yourself, well big deal, who cares, you know? What's a flashlight going to add other than some nice lighting effects? Well here's where we go into speculation, but there's a lot that could change here. We could see dark maps or nighttime variations of maps where flashlights could be beneficial to the player. This would also open the door for night vision goggles. We could perhaps see players being able to interact with light sources on maps, maybe by cutting power temporarily or by shooting lights out. There's also the potential of a flashlight being used to blind enemy players, something we've seen in games like Battlefield. Of course, using a flashlight would make you more visible to enemy players, so using one could really really add a new tactical dimension that we haven't seen in Firewall before. And before I move off of flashlights, First Contact Entertainment have confirmed you can use flashlights and finger tracking to make shadow puppets in the game. So if you're looking for a cherry on top with flashlights, I think there it is. So the next thing I want to talk about is the change of going from two hands being tracked as one to two hands being individually tracked thanks to the sense controllers that will be bundled with every PSVR2 headset. Now, I know anytime I mention the sense controllers and Firewall Ultra in the same sentence, people are going to bring up the aim controller to base. But I've already got a video dedicated to that topic if you want to check out my thoughts on that. What I want to talk about here are the ways in which this control difference could change things up from Firewall Zero Hour. Now there is huge potential for a real change to how Firewall feels to play depending on how First Contact Entertainment implement these new controllers. We already know they won't be using them for manual reloading so things will feel the same there, but we are yet to get confirmation on how lethals and tactical gear will be used by the player. Will we be manually throwing a grenade or will we be physically arming a C4 charge using finger tracking? We've seen a door being opened with one hand while the other wields a sidearm. What other potential things might we interact with in that way? Could riot shields be added? Will we be able to hack with one hand while shooting with the other? Will we be able to communicate a lot more effectively with two hands being tracked? A lot of these things could really shake things up from how it used to be in Firewall Zero Hour. The next thing I want to talk about is eye tracking. Now we know eye tracking will be used alongside foveated rendering to really boost the pixel count of wherever you'll be looking in Firewall Ultra, but that's not all it can do. We recently got a PSVR 2 hands-on impression from community member Tradition, and his main highlights from his time with the headsets and the demo of Horizon Call of the Mountain was how impressive the eye tracking was for quickly selecting things in the menus. With reliable and accurate eye tracking, going through the menus of Firewall Ultra could be a much smoother experience. We've already seen some changes the eye tracking has brought to Firewall Ultra already with a newly added weapon wheel which you control with your eyeballs. It's probably safe to assume First Contact Entertainment will implement the same controllability for other menus in the game, 
such as your loadout selection. There's also nothing stopping the devs from letting eye tracking have a more tangible impact on gameplay itself. Perhaps eye tracking could be used to assist with throw builds to let you more accurately toss a grenade where you intend, something that Horizon VR is also rumored to be doing but with the bow instead of throwables. Maybe it could be used to help pick up items in the game world which could be especially useful if a few things are close together. Perhaps we'll be able to accurately wink and blink at our teammates for even more enhanced communication. I'm sure there are plenty of other possibilities smarter people could think of instead of me, but we'll need to see more of Firewall Ultra to get a better idea of what approaches they'll be taking. Here's a change you might not have thought of. With the new inside-out tracking of the PSVR 2, players will no longer be bound to a very restrictive play space. That could translate to some new behaviours from players as they gain more freedom. Where is it? Where is it? You might expect to see a lot more trickier jammer locations in Firewall Ultra, as I know in my own personal experience, with my current setup, I'm very limited in where I can put placeables. But if I don't have to worry about the tracking camera anymore, I'll be crawling on the ceiling, you know, sticking jammies in the vents. Those are just some of the things that could change how Firewall feels going from zero hour to ultra. Again, I want to stress that this is all speculation, but until we get more footage or hands-on previews, that's all we can do. A reminder that this channel will be covering Firewall Ultra and PSVR 2 in general, so if that's what peels your potato, then do all that YouTube shies the subscribe and the like and all yada yada yada, because it'll help the channel out. That is it for today's video. Before I go, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. Link to his work in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Please try not to get too moist as we approach the release of PSVR 2. I am, of course, only joking, as it's not possible to ever be too moist. See you in the next one, lads and ladies. Bye for now.